All right, let's go. So last episode, we cut all of the wall panels. Um, this right here was, if you look over there, we left some extras, right? So we can trim it flush. And so on this panel right here, I've gone ahead and done that. And what you didn't see, and you can kind of, I don't know if you can see it on the backside here, is, uh, right, like buses, are gonna roll down the road, they're gonna shake, they're gonna vibrate, blah, blah, blah. The last thing that I want is to hear a bunch of vibrating and all that noise. And so everything that goes into this bus is not only screwed and bolted in, but is glued um, to not so much, well, I guess for adhesion and strength, but more so to help alleviate any vibrations that we might have, because Rattles and vibrations drive me nuts, so. Yes, they do. <laughs> My 20 year old truck, nothing rattles, nothing vibrates. So the whole frame on the other side of this was uh, glued together, just some liquid nails, hold it together. And now we're putting in a bunch of screws. I'm countersinking Mommy. all the heads on the screws so that Mommy. we can skim this plywood later on, sand it, and then we'll have a nice, smooth surface for painting. Mommy, okay. Thank you, one. <gasps> oh, it's so cute. Good job, bud. Pine cones. All right. Okay, go collect all the pine cones you can find, okay? Yeah, let's go. A bunch are over there. Wait a minute. Right there. I, saw, I see one right there. Okay, pick them all up. It's like Easter egg hunting. Yeah. side of the bus the walls are up and in and they are solid um, we need to run to the orange store yet again make another trip um, for insulation for the insides and I want to start on this side but as you can see I haven't really I haven't really come up with a way to mount these to the strip the first one I did, I did uh, like a big bolt and I didn't really like how that laid out. Uh, the next thing is, is I want really solid walls, but there's a big gap here because of the pocket door. And so what I think I'm going to do is we have some more of these guys from the kit and I think I'm going to put one more right about there just so that we have a nice as much as supported possible wall so that's the next step is putting all this in putting the walls on it derek made the frame for the bunk bed well, it's just the start of it. A start. So the bottom piece is glued on. So the mattresses are 75 inches long by 30 wide. Putting this here gives us 34. We're going to lose half an inch, maybe three quarter to the wall. So that'll give us 33, let's say. So that's an extra inch and a half on both sides for 
comforter space. You know, the mattress isn't perfectly 30, so. But, so the next step is, is how high do we make the first bunk in relation to the second bunk? And also what we're thinking about for the second bunk is the ability for the bunk to tilt up on a hinge. And so, or maybe we pull it out, I don't know. Like if it, if it's, if it's too high, it'll only pivot, you know, it'll hit the roof. And so you'll only, you'll like lose this right. space, you know? If we put it too low, then the person on the bottom is like sleeping in a coffin, you know? So maybe we just come up with like a little U-shaped bracket in the top bunk. I just make a metal frame and the metal frame we can pull out if we don't need it. I don't know. Kind of looking at like what dimension do we have here for the drawers. I, I don't know. I think this is enough. Keep in mind that this doesn't take into account we're going to lose a, you know, a quarter inch for the floor and then the drawer and then there will also be a lip to hold the mattress in, right? Right. So the, the, the drawer face can go over this. And so this right here is nine inches. So that's an, you know, let's say we lose an inch for the drawer itself. That's an eight inch deep drawer times, you know, 77 divided by two, you know, a 30 inch wide by eight inch deep by 30 inch drawer like that's a pretty big drawer yeah right? and it's for the kids too it's for the so. kids stuff so and then if you sit on this my legs are you know i'm a pretty tall guy but you have to figure also we're gonna put there would be a mattress and then bedding to 10 inch mattress on top of this so i'm gonna be sitting like like that like that's not too bad i guess so, do we go with that? There's our new poopy. Got a new pooper. Take a look inside here. Oh, wait! That's not the pooper. I think this is good room. We just put this in here because we're just so excited to see what it looks like. <laughs> I will say. There's our toilet and our sink. Build, building the bus, it is very easy to get carried away and jumping really far forward, and this is one of those moments. However, we're putting in walls, we're putting in things, we're trying to figure out where things go, and if we waited until the last minute to try this, and let's say there wasn't enough room or whatever, uh, we would be screwed. So this is a step that we have to do to figure out where things go, where they fit, and uh kind of want to pull out the the flooring to see how the flooring no, looks we're not i decided that i'm not quite sure if i like the color of this vanity combo for the bathroom so we're gonna go ahead and take it back to the store Make sure all the contents are in there. Oh! Oh wait! Oh wait! There's two puppies in there. $27. No, that's a 20 amp. We don't need a 20 amp. Oh. We need 15. They're $50? No, 21. $21. So how many do we need? We need... One in each bunk. One in each bunk. One in our room. One in our room. One. Maybe one, one in the living room area. What do you think?
We're getting into closing in the interior walls. And so one of the things we wanted to do is uh, mitigate sound. So we're, unfortunately also our Home Depot was out of the insulation we used before when we closed up the, or when we leveled out the front of the bus. Not so, only our Home Depot, but every Home Depot in like a yeah, 50 mile uh, radius. Coronavirus and finding supplies, even like our refrigerator, the refrigerator that we want, a Samsung counter depth, 17.5 inch cubic foot wow, refrigerator. Specific. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I've been on like every website. Best Buy has it on sale. You can't find one in Southern California. It just doesn't exist. So like coronavirus is really putting a damper on stuff. Uh, we also see it, we live in Huntington Beach, so we're right next to the port of Long Beach. Um, we see all the boats that are held up in port. I guess there's a huge shutdown with the port right now. And so there are ships filled with supplies and stuff from <clears throat> China. But, you know, we, there are certain things that we just can't get. Um, even yesterday when we were talking to uh, the guy at the RV place, the sales guy at the RV place, we were talking to him about, we originally were thinking about getting a trailer, but we were like a six month lead time. And he said that the builders of the trailers and the RVs are really having a hard time because the supplies that they use are in short demand as well as the manufacturers of the certain things. So like air conditioning units don't have their supplies. Um, so it's getting a little tough. We gotta use what we got. So unfortunately for us, that means it's double the price. So we jumped up to this, I think it's called Wool Batten something fire guard something. Um, supposedly it's better at mitigating sound than just a regular, I think it's an R13 two by four wall insulation. So um, yeah, it's better. Anyway, so we started filling up the cavities of the walls. But that also means that we need to run the things inside of the walls that need to go there. So we did a huge trip to Home Depot and we have wall boxes, outlets, GFI, GFCI wall outlets. We also have um, these fancy guys right here that have USB ports integrated into them from Leviton. These are like 20, what were these? $21, 20, and $21 some change. a piece. I think we got eight of those. Um, all the wall plates. We have shallow boxes for the switches. So all of our outlets are going to be 110, obviously. You need to plug them in. Those will go through an inverter or through uh, just a regular 15 amp plug-in. All of our lighting, however, is 12 volt. So the switches will go down to a relay panel that will turn on the lights. All of the outlets are 110, so we're running those to the main breaker panel. So we're drilling holes through the frame, blah, 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 routing the wires, and then we're gonna seal up this wall. I need to put a little bit more insulation here, and I'll glue it and screw it. There's our first box. It's a beautiful box. So this is our first light box. Again, all of our lights are going to be 12 volt. And so this will be just a small signal wire that'll go to a controller. And that controller will control the lights in the bus. We, I've been watching another channel. Uh, I think it's called Beginning From This Morning. Um, it's another RV builder and he's super thorough. Link in the description, he's super helpful. And I believe he's using an Arduino controller so that we can have push button switches, but when you hold them down, they also do a dimming function. Uh, I've played with Arduino in the past and I happen to have that same relay controller board with pulse width modulation, etc. Dana just was like, what did I just say? <laughs> Normal Who in the what now? Normal bulbs dim by dropping the voltage. LED lights can't do that. They need full voltage. And so there is something called pulse width modulation. Think of it as instead of a solid signal, there's like dashes. And depending on if you want a really bright light, 
then the dashes are, are very short. And if you want a low dim light, then it pulses that super quickly. And the LED light will dim, but our eyeballs can't detect the blinking that it does because it's so quick. And so it gives you the sensation of dimming. So what that means is we can't run regular dimmers because this is a 12 volt system, but we will have a system where when you push it once, it turns the lights on, push it off, it turns the lights off. When you hold it down, it will go through a dimming sequence where it goes up and down. And when you let go, it'll hold. And I believe it remembers where it left left really? off. Really? That's super awesome. Yeah. There's all there I think he I don't know if he wrote the software. I think he did, but we're gonna cop that and roll with it. Love it. Love this idea. Thank you. 